Hello, my name is Carla Weemers, and I'm a volunteer here at Beaver Lake Nature Center. Today I will demonstrate how to make a kissing ball. Before we get started, I want to read to you uh, just a short history of a kissing ball. Originally, during England's Middle Ages, holy boughs made from interlocking evergreen branches and supporting figurines of baby Jesus or the Holy Family graced passages. Throughout the holiday season, the holy bough hung from entryways as an omen of goodwill for visitors. After a period of unpopularity due to the Puritans, Victorians brought the holy bough back from obscurity, refurbished with a new look and a new name. It now became an elaborately decorated apple or potato, complete with herbs and foliage. The herbs on each kissing ball were not only chosen for their beauty, but also for their symbolic value. Lavender and rosemary signified loyalty and devotion, while thyme promoted courage. Mistletoe was a popular decorative choice, symbolizing good fortune and fertility. The kissing ball began to emphasize romance rather than mere goodwill. Dancers waltzed under the kissing ball laced with mistletoe for a kiss, or single women stood and waited for a potential suitor. Eventually, sprigs of mistletoe superseded all other greenery and became the enduring symbol of holiday affection that we know today. But traditions are hard to die, and recently the kissing ball has had a resurgence as a home decoration. And that's what we'll be making today, a home decoration. So you need to, so certain supplies. Oh, let's do the overview first. Um, you cut pieces from bow, short pieces of bow. Um, you have a piece of floral clay. You're going to mount it to a frame, and those short pieces uh, go into your frame and kissing and floral clay and make the ball. So your supplies, obviously, you'll need a frame. You'll need uh, floral clay. You'll need a piece of wire that we have doubled. And I'll tell you why in a minute. You should have your clippers, tails, and a bow. And any decorations, and I will talk about decorations in a few minutes, uh, that you might want to use. So let's start with your frame. Uh, you want to hold it so that the spikes are sticking up towards the ceiling. And you want to take your wire. If I could stand that, no, it won't stand. Double it in half so you know approximately where the middle is. Put that wire through the X on the top. This X, is, I'll talk about this X several times. So there's an X here on the top. So you hook it around the, the X. And you want to twist this about three inches or so up. There's a purpose for this. So twist it all the way down to the end. And then you want to reverse the whole thing so that your loop comes up here on the top and that piece sticks down here and twist it at the top of your X again. This secures the hook or your loop. So now you have, oops, it twisted. Now you have a frame that's on a loop and this will become your hanger. Now you take your floral clay and, well, I'll talk about the floral clay right now. This is floral clay. It's absolutely unforgiving. You poke something into it and decide, oh, I don't want it there, and pull it out. Now the next time you have to push it farther in. If you push too many farther in, it's going to act like a knife. And with the weight, when you get close to the end, it will just split it and it will fall apart. I don't mean to scare anybody, but you need to be careful and follow the directions that I will tell you later on. So this floral clay has to go onto your fr frame. You aim it so the middle of the floral clay goes onto those spikes. You have to tilt it to get there. And I know I'm going to take off an edge, maybe two edges, 
to get that onto the floral clay. And then your handy dandy tail that we, I had you leave is going to go down through the middle and this just helps to stabilize it. You could, this is kind of long, so I, I'm going to fold it over and stick it down in there. And it just helps to stabilize it just a little bit. So now you have your floral clay in the middle of your frame. And we can set that aside for a minute. Set these aside. And let me tell you about the greens. All these greens are balsam. Um, we call this right side up or top side. You'll hear me say top side often. Or a back side, a bottom side. You can see the stems for this. You do not want to see any of those as we go along. You want to see only the nice greens that are on the top here. There is also doubled needled balsam. You can see that they're thicker and spikier than the single needle balsam, which is kind of soft. Um, they'll be mixed in your piles probably. Um, Use some of both if you want to. Try to use all of one kind if you want to. Um, consistency is the name of the game. So you want every pile or every piece that you put in uh, to be the same as the others. Now let me show you how to cut them. Let me get a piece here. And I may need my clippers. Here they are. You want them about as long as your hand. This is crucial for this particular thing. In wreath making, it's not so cru crucial, but in a kissing ball it is. This floral clay will only support so much weight. So you only want it about as long as your hand. If you want to remember how long your hand is, put a piece of tape on the table, and then you can measure each piece up against it. It doesn't matter if they're shorter, you can make a smaller kissing ball, or if they're a little longer, that's about the same size. Um, you can use these shorter ones too, it won't make any difference. So you want to, here's a nice one here. And now look, there's a bunch of branches there. You can use those. You take this, you never want to see a cut end. A cut ends do not look professional, so you want to cut it way down in the V and about as long as your, so probably maybe a little longer. And now I have another piece. I would probably use this whole, whole piece and this one. And maybe I'll just get, get rid of that one anyhow. Sometimes you have a single one that you can stick in. Here's a, here's a double one, you can use that. And you want to use as much as possible. Uh, there's quite a bit of waste to this, but use as much as possible. And if you can figure out something else to use with your little pieces that are left over, go ahead and do that. Now the next step with this is to pull all the needles off the bottom. Here at the center we have a handy dandy tool, uh, a needle stripper that you take and pull off the bottom needles. You do this because this is too thick uh, to put in your floral clay to put a lot of them and you, you want to put them close together so th this interferes with that. Whoops. So you want to strip them. Now if you don't have one of those handy dandy little tools you have to do it with your fingers. Just takes a little longer. It works fine, just takes a little longer. So we start I guess I put one over here. Here's your frame, all set up. Now remember I talked about top and bottom. You want to take the top of the pieces and face them up. And in this case, we're going to also face it in. It helps to put the first four in first. So face up and in towards the X. I told you that I'd mention that X again. Here it is, top towards the X. Top towards the X. And that's all there is to it. You keep doing that all the way down. 
only stick it in your inch that you've stripped. Don't stick it in up to here. All right, all right, you'll cut that floor clay right in half. You can work all the way down one side, or you can work around in a circle. It very much helps if you can hang it on something. Here at the center, we turn tables upside down and we hang them on the table leg. But I have found at home, we have a hook like this. Actually, I hang it this way. This hooks over the door and it allows me to hook that so that I can work underneath. There's also another hook that I have here that may work. This one would be better, but this one might work as well. You have to find some place in your home to hook it. Um, a kitchen cabinet so it hangs down below it. Um, you might be able to do it in the shower, hang this over the shower uh, spigot. Um, it'd be a little hard to work in there, but uh, you could do it there. Or um, any place else that you could find, maybe a place off of a rafter in a garage or a basement. So again, you continue to put these in, um, top side up, facing up. These will go in, 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 in. So when you get to the bottom X, the backs are facing each other. So if I was doing it on this side, top side up, in, 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 and right by the X, the back pieces will be together. Before you get to the very end, you want to attach your tails. So that X is crucial there to, as well. You put the wire, this is a little long, so you might want to cut the ends off there. Put it through your X, bring it right to the X. So it's a little more complicated when you've got all this surrounding it, but you want your tails to hang down. And you do your bow the same way, except on the top, you bring your tails to opposite sides. It's a little different from a regular bow. And you pull out the middle loops and give them a twist. And do the other side. And remember that kissing balls are viewed from the bottom. They are not viewed from the top. So what this bow does on top doesn't really matter a whole lot. You'll just see kind of a red blob on the top of your <laughs> kissing ball. And I want these tails, one to come on one side and one to come on the other side. And you want to find the X. Again, this is long. It's easier to deal with if they're not quite as long. It helps sometimes to curl the end up so you can hook it around that X. It takes a bit, have patience, to get that around to the other side of the X. You can't see there. Okay, come on. Talking to it sometimes helps. There we go. Pull it all the way down in, as far as you can bring it. There we go. Twist it around several times. And I never leave any wire sticking up. I always turn my wire and stick it back down into your work. So there'll be a ribbon that comes off one side and a tail that comes off the other side. Let's see. I talked about the hooks. Usually, you don't decorate a kissing ball. Usually, it's about like the one that was over here. Uh, but you can put some natural things in there or even some, some little, you could pull this apart and stick those in. Uh, there's any kind of berries that you can find that might just single might. And then there's these little called floral picks that when you pull this off, 
it just has a little wire. This isn't long enough or stiff enough to stick into that uh, floral clay. So you want to wire it on the little pick. This makes it longer. It extends the length of it. And it's also thicker that you can poke it in and get it right into the floral clay. You can do pine cones, you don't usually, um, but you can do pine cones. And if you do want to paint them, you paint them from the top down. Uh, so you just see the edges and you have wire, which I don't have here. So I'll just take a piece of this. You take a wire and you weave it in and out of the bottom scales and twist it. And you could use it on the floral pick as well. So that actually works out quite well. Uh, let's see, natural materials, little rose hips. Um, after you get the uh, thorns off, can be snapped off and stuck in. Or something like this that came from my garden. I don't know what it is, but it would work. Um, you can use different bows if you want. I like the bows that have the wire on the edge. You can um, scrunch it up and make it go in any direction you want. You can also tip, um, just on the tips, silver paint, gold paint. There is snow that you could use on, just on the tips. You could use spray adhesive with some glitter. Remember that glitter goes all over the place. You'll find it in your home from now until next year uh, if you have it in the house. And I'm gonna show you what to do with the green in a minute if you're interested. You can also attach things with your glue gun. Um, a, little, a little harder to do it with the glue gun, um, but it, that works as well. Now let me show you one more thing. Uh, this is a kissing ball from last year that I have sprayed with the green paint. It was all brown. We hung it in our garage. Uh, actually, it wasn't hung in the garage. It was on a shelf, so it has a flat side, ordinarily, if you kept it hanging. It's pretty delicate, and look, it wants to fall apart here. Uh, but um, again, I just put some little balls in there, and it would work if you wanted to use it a second time. Again, it's pretty delicate, but it works. So I want to thank you all for uh, coming to the class. Uh, I hope you enjoy your kissing ball. And please visit here at the center and enjoy the trails. And I wish you all happy holidays.